All right, a very pleasant a good day, everyone, and welcome. Dave Fisher here from USA Hockey Headquarters in Colorado Springs on this momentous day as we celebrate uh, the terrific careers of Jocelyn and Monique Lamoureux and reflect on uh, all they have meant to our uh, sport over the course of their time. Their careers certainly are well documented. As you know by now, they announced their retirement from the U.S. Women's National Team program after 14 years earlier today and from their time uh, growing up in Grand Forks at Purpura Arena uh, to uh, the outstanding accomplishments for Team U.S. on the international stage. No doubt their career has been punctuated by six gold medals uh, in world championship play for Team USA and of course three Olympic medals. None more memorable than what happened just about three years ago in Pyeongchang, South Korea. And without further ado, it's uh, fun to welcome in from their home in Grand Forks, Monique and Jocelyn Lamaru. Great to have you guys and uh, congratulations on a spectacular career. Uh, twins will be happy to take your questions here in just a minute, but as we begin today, uh, great to have uh, the executive director of USA Hockey with us, Pat Kelleher, for uh, some remarks as uh, we start off. Pat? Thanks, Fish. Good morning, everyone. Um, certainly over the course of USA Hockey's history, we've had a lot of great sibling connections that have helped us on the ice. I think you go all the way back to the 60s with Billy and Bob Cleary, and then you get into later years and you think of siblings of, of male and female. You think of the Granados, Tony Granado and Cammy Granado, and all the things that they did on the ice for us and continue to do. But I don't think there's a, a set of siblings that we have like the Lamaru sisters, a pair of identical twins who have been incredible incredible members of the US, USA Hockey Women's National Team program for 14 years. And today it's a celebration of what they've done for USA Hockey and what they've done in their lives. And it is, um, you know, retirements are always, I guess, a bittersweet celebration, right? But what Jocelyn and Monique have accomplished in their careers on the ice has been nothing short of incredible. Um, they are two great representatives and ambassadors of USA Hockey. Um, it, it's, I think we all will remember February of 2018 in Pyeongchang and their contributions, certainly in the gold medal game, but to help us get there as well. Um, we'll all remember those, but, but there's other times they've been parts of the program for a long time. And, and, you know, that, that they, they've, they've won everywhere that they've been to come across They're growing up in Grand Forks and then through Shattuck St. Mary's and then in college hockey in Minnesota, North Dakota, um, just been incredible competitors Fierce competitors, I would say, would probably be a great description. Um, and, and again, I, I just feel very fortunate that I was there to, to witness them cap off their careers with that gold medal in Pyeongchang. And, and we'll always have those lasting memories of those two, the shootout goal and the game tying goal from both of them and how fitting that each one had one of those memorable goals on that day. Um, also at this time, I think back about people and how they get here and how Jocelyn and Monique got here through their incredible family in Grand Forks. Um, you don't get here. They don't just show up and have a career. They do without the support. I think that they had at home. And I was fortunate to spend a lot of time at the last two Olympics with their mom and dad, Lynn and Pierre, um, who were incredibly supportive. And it's been uh, fun to get to know them a little bit. And obviously Monique and Jocelyn are the youngest kids and had four older brothers to chase around incredible, incredible hockey family. Um, and so it's been a pleasure to, to get to know them a little bit and, and really share the stories of, how the twins came to be who they are and what they became as people and hockey players as well. So thank you for the Lamaroos for all their support of, of their daughters and sisters. And I think now that moves along and they have the support of their husbands and children and excited for that next chapter in their lives. So um, finally, just again, thank you, Joss and Mo for all that you've done for USA hockey. Um, as we spoke and, and recently, I know you, you two won't go too far away from us, which is great. Uh, it'll be a new chapter. Uh, off the ice, but we look forward to having you involved with USA Hockey for a long, long time. And thank you for incredible careers and all that you've done to represent USA Hockey so, so well over the years. Awesome. Thanks very much, PK. And uh, also fun to have with us this morning from the Twin Cities, the frigid Twin Cities, I believe, uh, Katie Million, who's the Director of Women's National Team Programs for USA Hockey. And uh, Katie, turn it over to you for a few thoughts. Yeah, thanks, Fish. As uh, as Pat mentioned, obviously it's a, a another bittersweet day for us here at USA Hockey, but we're extremely happy for you, Jocelyn and Monique. And as you begin this next chapter, it's it's we know it's going to be incredible, but we're certainly going to miss your passion and dedication that you've brought to this program. 
and uh, although we haven't had a lot of time working together, you know, I, I it's it's clear the impact that the two of you have made on this program and, and USA Hockey. Um, your individual stats and, and the incredible accolades are obviously much deserved, but I think one of the things that stands out for me is the impact that the two of you have had on so many young girls. It's, it's just tremendous. And we, we know that your work in that area will continue for, for years to come. And just as members of that 1998 gold medal winning team were considered pioneers, you and your teammates from the 2018 Olympic gold medal team will also go down in the history books as pioneers to that next generation of, of young female hockey players. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just incredible. And I, I look forward to watching the both of you in this next chapter and, and wish you all the very best. Congratulations on an incredible career with USA Hockey and thank you so much for all you've done and will continue to do for equity and women in sport. Thanks Katie very much and Pat thank you. Appreciate you guys being here. We'll let uh, you guys go uh, for now and uh, time to hear, well not quite yet, um, almost time to hear from Monique and Johnson. I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, today um, to hear from one of the all-time greats in our sport. And I know someone that the twins have looked up to and idolize over the course of time. <laughs> you got it, Joss. <laughs> so someone that you got a chance to play with uh, on the Olympic stage. And uh, you guys are exactly right. You guessed it from our home in Massachusetts. It is awesome to have, I believe should be popping in soon, the great Angela Ruggiero. Hey! <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, I want that. I want your boys to barge in on this. <laughs> I know they're in the. It's they're they're they have blueberries all over their face right now, so that'll be fun. <laughs> um, no, I'm so excited to be here. Like, what an what an honor, sir. From the bottom of my heart, you two. I call them my sissies, by the way, my little sisters. Uh, when you joined the USA Hockey program, immediately I knew these are two, they're going to be here for a very long time. You brought this fierce competitiveness that you only see in the rare elite athlete. You wanted to be out on every shift. You both never settled for a loss. Even when we won, you looked for how do I make my game better? I love you both. I respect you both so immensely. I'm so proud of you. What you've done on the ice and everyone's going to look back and, you know, they're not going to know all the little things you did and your teammates will, myself included. Uh, I'm proud, obviously, of both of your tremendous impact in the 90, uh, 2018 Olympics. Uh, you know, we'll hear, everyone will know about that. They'll watch that. But obviously, you've, you've left your, uh, your mark on the program uh, through those games alone. Um, but what you've done off the ice too, with your uh, advocacy for equal play and more opportunities for girls and women and for young men that look up to women, young, young girls that look up to women now because of the, the visibility that you brought to our sport. Um, I'm just so proud. I, you know, I was trying to think of like, how do I, I've got like 20 seconds <laughs> to sum up my feelings for you both and just fierce, competitive, clutch. Uh, great teammates, uh, good people, and role models, I think, for, for the next generation. So um, to my little sisters, who I love deeply, I'm so proud of you. Uh, you are amazing hockey players. The program is going to miss you dearly. But I know whatever you end up doing next is you put an ounce of the drive and competitiveness and uh, and you know, uh, thought into whatever you do next, you're going to, you're going to do a great job, including your little, your little children who I'm already starting to adopt virtually. Um, so I just want to say, I love you both and, and congratulations on a phenomenal, phenomenal career. Thanks, Ann. Thanks, we Ann. love you. Awesome. And stick with us if you would here. I mean, we're going to, we're going to get to the, to the twins promise, but just one more, uh, fun, fun element before we hear from them and Ann, stick around for this, if you wouldn't mind. And, um, when, when you talk, I mean, you, you got, you're seeing great athletes, the best. Ange, where'd you go? Come back. 
Uh, Sorry, I thought I, you were kicking me off the stage. No, 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 no stick with us. Um, I mean, you see just the, the top, cream of the crop. When you think of the all-time greatest Olympians in any sport of all time, uh, this person comes to uh, the top of the list. Uh, a three-time Olympic gold medalist, twice in the heptathlon, once in the long jump. Uh, the greatest heptathlete of all time still today, many years after her retirement. And we're just thrilled uh, to have join us. And I think she should be popping in here just any minute. Uh, the great Jackie joiner Kersey. Jackie, thanks for being here. This is all yours. Hi, Jackie. Oh, Jackie. Hey. <laughs> You know, for a moment, it kicked me out. I'm like, wait a minute, what is it doing? Hey, Jocelyn and Monique. Oh my gosh, congratulations on everything, you know. And I with my Team USA, you can't see it, but <laughs> I just want to say, you know, I appreciate you all for what you have done on the ice, but more importantly, what you're doing off the ice. Our relationship and working with you know, trying to do the digital divide, but then also, you know, when it comes to uh, the inequities and making sure that equity, you know, for the women that's in your sport, but then also it became an eye opener for everyone. And so I, I love you all, you know, I love your mom, your dad, you know, it's like I'm family, you know, so to be on here to just say, enjoy your retirement. It's not a retirement, really. It's just that you, you're not on the ice as much as you want to be, but your life is going to be inundated with so many other things and what you have given to uh, the, your sport and everyone who have come on here just to acknowledge. And I'm just glad that they asked me to just pay a little part of it and just know that you know, I am your big sister from afar. You know, I didn't, I didn't uh, skate on the ice. I didn't play hockey, but you know, I'm there with you uh, when it's cold. Like today in St. Louis, it's snowing and ice, and I'm like, and today I'm a part of the retirement for Jocelyn and Monique. And but I, I, I could have gotten out there and put my skates on, but no, I wouldn't make the team. You know. It has passed me by. And so all I can do is say, I love you all. Keep up the great work and just know that uh, you're going to be missed, but just you have a family here that will, you're always welcome. So thanks for having me on here. And my heart goes out to you all. And thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Linda's going to die when she sees you. <laughs> all the best. Thank you, Jackie and Angela, so much for being part of this. Uh, very much appreciate it. Great celebration. We'll let you guys go now, Ange. Uh, appreciate it, Jackie. Ange, you the best, too. Uh, thanks so much. Well, I just have to show this. Go ahead, Ange. Yeah. That sums it up right there. Yeah. I only got one of you in there, but. That's me. <laughs> My girl. Oh, wow. Love you. Awesome. Bye. All right. See you guys. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Uh, now uh, the stage is yours, Joss and Monique. And uh, Joss, why don't we start with you? Um, well, thank you, everyone, for the kind words, Pat, Katie, Fish, um, Ange, and Jackie. Um, we feel so blessed to um, just to have been able to play the sport as long as we have. And, um, you know, we've traveled the world. We've met some amazing people. I mean, Ange and Jackie being on this call means the world to us. And to be able to chase a dream with such amazing teammates over the last 15 years has just been a dream come true. And um, I think we've learned obviously in our losses in 2010 and 2014, you can, you can do all the little things you can work your hardest and you're never, you're never guaranteed to accomplish anything that you set out to do. And so, um, to cap off our national team career with a, with a win in 2018 and in the way that we did it, um, is obviously special for us, but I think it's, it's how we did it and how our team did it that makes it so special. Um, and you just think about the people that 
have been been a part of our journey from the beginning or maybe just for a season or just along the entire way and how grateful we are for the coaches, the teachers, the teammates, obviously our family. Um, it's just, we wouldn't be here without that extended family. And so when we think about our career in its entirety, it's, it's a blessing and we've committed basically half our lives, uh, over half of our lives to, to accomplishing a dream and about 15 years of our life has been about the next camp, what we're getting ready for the next tournament, the next medal that we're chasing and the amount of time that goes into that and the, the commitment that we've given to that. And, um, even though it's sad to say goodbye and it's really hitting home as, as we've been getting messages from teammates and friends throughout the morning, um, I think we both agree that it's time for the next chapter in our life. And like Pat said, it's, uh, it's not goodbye. Uh, we'll be around. It'll just be in a different capacity, but um, we'll be team USA's biggest fan uh, coming up in this next year. And we're just grateful for everything that, that USA hockey has provided us and um, for helping us change the game. Yeah. Um, again, thanks, Pat, Katie, Ange, and Jackie. It was a pleasant surprise there. Um, we couldn't be more thankful for the people that have – hockey has brought in so many people and our paths have crossed with so many amazing people because of hockey. And so I think, like so many of you have iterated, we've, we've been able to accomplish so much and we've set out um, to accomplish so many different goals in hockey. And we've been fortunate enough to, to be able to cross a lot of those things off our list. And that's all – great and, and amazing. And as athletes, that's what you set out and strive to do to, to become the best and to be elite. And I think in the pursuit of, of the, of being great as an athlete, we also realized the pursuit of being a great person and being a great advocate is just as important, if not more important in that process. And I think if it wasn't for the amazing coaches, our supportive family, teammates like Ange, people like Jackie that we've crossed paths with. We, I think because of those people, we've realized how important it is to, it's important to be, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice as our coach Peter Elander would say. And so I remember I was reading actually the, the article from ESPN this morning and Ange was quoted in it saying our first national team event in 2006, we would have been 17 years old and, and we were pretty ticked off that we weren't on the power play <laughs> and us coming in as 17 year olds with Hillary Knight and thinking like we we should have been on the power play which is pretty laughable now um but to for Ange to recognize that drive in us and to to see the competitiveness the competitiveness that we had and then just because we had teammates like her and Julie Chu Natalie Darwis Jenny Potter people like that, that were such great examples. We learned how to harness that competitiveness and learn how to be great teammates and great, um, great competitors along the way. And knowing that you can still be super competitive you can have a fierce drive, but it doesn't have to go without being an amazing teammate and amazing leader. And so we're so fortunate to have had teammates that have taught us those lessons along the way. And we hope that we've been able to teach our, our younger teammates as we've gotten older and become the older ones in the program to, to be able to teach those younger players that those things are just as important as being competitive and working hard to be your best every day that um, to have those things go hand in hand, I think makes you a great leader and a great uh, teammate and competitor. And so I think we're I don't think enough thanks could ever go around um, to the amazing coaches and teammates and friends that we've had throughout our careers, because without, um, without that, I don't think we'd be have the success that um, we've had. So I just want to say thank you. There's, like I said, there's never enough thanks that could go around. And um, for the people that have uh, recognized us today, we're, we're so appreciative of it. And kind of like typical fashion of Jocelyn, we didn't think today would be like a huge, we knew it'd be like kind of a big deal, but not a huge deal. And then we realized pretty quickly in the morning, once it got announced that um, to see all the messages from everybody and our teammates and friends, that's, that's what's truly important. Uh, 
the medals are awesome. The championships are obviously going to be remembered, but uh, the the teammates, the friendships and relationships we've developed along the way, that's what um, truly matters to us and what we see when we see our medals. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, and we are going to take questions now. We'll use the raise hand function for the media on the call. And uh, our old pal John Warrow from the Associated Press has been on top of it from the beginning. And uh, John, let's see here, should be opening your mic. And uh, please go ahead. Congratulations, uh, John Warrow with the AP. Congratulations. Congrats on a great um, 14, 15 years uh, to you, Jocelyn and Monique. Um, I guess uh, it's for either of you, but how much dip more difficult might this decision have been if 2018 ended differently? <laughs> You know what? My, my husband asked me that question like, Oh, two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> he goes, I, I don't know if you could make this decision if you guys hadn't won in 2018. And I thought about it and my initial reaction is, well, yeah, we would be able to. And then I really thought about it and I think it would just be much more difficult regard, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you know, you'd, we've been chasing a dream for so long. Um, so had we, have we not won, um, who knows, but we did. So, <laughs> uh, we're able, I think, to come to, um, this decision with, with clear minds and clear hearts and, um, know that it's, it's the right time for us. So I guess in, in that sense, you wrote, you wrote your own ending, both of you. <laughs> yeah, we, one of our, our oldest brother actually called us. Um, he's playing in Austria right now. So he's, he's outlasting everybody in the family as far as hockey playing days are concerned, but he called us and it was, just, it was interesting because we were, we chatted quickly about how when we stepped off the ice in 2018, we didn't know that that was going to be our last um, international um, tournament that we'd play in so to cap off with an olympic gold medal but i think it's it's almost fitting in a way that you don't you don't know that that's going to be your last game because i think you put different types of pressure on yourself um if we had known that so um yeah i mean it's just, we had full intentions of continuing to compete and everything but as uh, you get older and, and life happens and you start families and everything your perspective and your priorities change and everything and so uh like Jocelyn said it's it's definitely not an easy decision to come to but one that's right for us and right at the um at the right time all right thanks John for the question let's go over to the Twin Cities now uh and uh to I'm used to Rachel Blount I know very Rachel Borzy. Rachel, your uh, line is open. Please go ahead. Great to have you. Thank you. Congratulations. You will be so missed. It will be so different without having you guys around. I wanted to ask you kind of a big picture question. During your time with the team, how much progress do you feel was made in terms of the game giving opportunities and respect and resources to women? And how would you like to see that continue in the future? I think um, it, as we look at our career in its entirety um, from a grassroots level up, we didn't have an opportunity to play on girls teams growing up. Um, and I would say in 2010, everybody but one player on our team had to play on boys teams growing up. Um, and then in 2018, you take that same poll and I would say it's about, it was about half and half. Mm -hmm. So half the team played with girls teams all the way growing up. And I would say that speaks to the opportunities that girls have today and the competitiveness. Um, so I would say at a grassroots level, it's, it's changing. And I think when you, when you win an Olympic gold medal on that stage and um, how important the Olympics is to, to the United States, that changes opportunity every four years. And I think that's always been important, obviously winning medals. And then I would say, obviously, um, in 2017, we, we made great changes with USA hockey. Monique and I benefited from the maternity benefits that were in our contract. And I think that's the next step is continuing to support the national teams, um, the women's national teams through the U18 and U22 teams and continuing to grow women's hockey from the top down and the bottom up. And those opportunities have changed throughout our career. And we're looking forward to continuing to be a part of that process and to create more opportunities for young girls in the future. 
Yeah, I think uh, just to piggyback off of that too, when you look at the national team, when we started out, I think almost, it might've been just under half the players were still in college. And now you look at the makeup of the national team and the the, age, the average age uh, is becoming older. Um, but I think that goes to speak to the competitiveness, the competitiveness and there's the, the tip of the spear players are getting better players are playing longer, which I think means that I think shows that there, there's more opportunities that are coming about and we still have a long ways to go to, to grow women's hockey, but in the, just in the course of our short careers, uh, in our 15 years of being a part of the national program, um, you can see that there's been immense change and immense growth and hopefully it continues to trend in that direction. Thanks much, Rachel. And uh, let's go now to uh, the Ice Garden and Mike Murphy. Mike, your line should be open. Hi, thanks so much. Congratulations on amazing careers for both of you. I, you have such a unique perspective on, you know, kind of globe trotting, um, seeing the game throughout the world. You, you talked a bit about the growth in the U.S. specifically, which is amazing. But I mean, since you were 17 year olds, hungry for power play time, uh, how do you think the game has grown globally um, from where it is today? And, you know, all the all the different countries you visited, the tournaments and seeing the growth of women's hockey across the globe. I think it's different for different countries. Obviously, Finland is up and coming. Um, I mean, they almost won Worlds last year uh, on, a, on a questionable call and beat the U.S. team. And so um, that, that's that been exciting to see. And then there's been drop-offs with other teams. And so I think what the the bigger question at play is how are, how are governing bodies supporting their national women's teams um, and not just – not just on an Olympic year. Um, uh, Russia has gotten a lot better since, since we played them in our first worlds in 2009. And so I think overall the competition has gotten better, but I also think there's going to be a generation of players that have played in that U18 world championships that will now start, we'll start to see the progress of that creating more grassroots programs in different countries to support women playing throughout their lives. Um, and I think that's going to create growth, but that takes a generation. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen with um, strict two-year training programs leading up to Olympic games. Um, it happens at a grassroots level. And I think that U18 tournament being implemented um, is the start to that. Um, and hopefully we start to see um, more great players coming up in Europe. Um, I mean, I think Alina Mueller from Switzerland, she's an amazing player. She's, I think, 19 now, 20. Plays at um, Northeastern. Plays at Northeastern. Players like that, I think we're going to we're gonna start to see great European players um, coming up, and they're going to be young and dynamic, and it's exciting to see. All right, Mike, thanks for the question. Next, uh, we go to the athletic, Erica. Erica, welcome. Your line should be open. Thanks, Fish. Um, congratulations to both of you, Monique and Jocelyn. I, I would like to ask you um, two questions that are likely inevitable <laughs> once you announce your retirement. Um, but the first is, um, what are you looking forward to doing um, now that you won't have so much time dedicated specifically to hockey and training? Um, and then the other question is, how would you like your sister to be remembered? in her time with USA Hockey? Um, well, I, to your first question and what we're looking forward to, so I'm actually due with our second son in almost five just weeks. over five weeks, four, four or five weeks. So we got that coming up. So expanding our family is like the next thing on our horizon as a family. Um, and then uh, our book is actually coming out in two weeks from today, Dare to Make History. So we have that coming out. So hopefully that'll keep us busy for, for a little while. So in the near future, we have that going on and then we we started a foundation um almost two years ago now the monique and jocelyn lamary foundation and we're um the pandemic has actually allowed us to devote and commit more time to really developing a plan and what our ultimate goals are moving forward with that and so we've 
in the last couple of months, we've actually made a lot of headway um, uh, in what our goals are. And ultimately, we want to help underprivileged youth um, in the education and extracurricular space. And so we're we're really excited about that. That's been a new passion of ours that we're loving to, to devote time to. Um, and then to your, your second question, how do I want Jocelyn to be remembered? I, I think so many people, it's been, it's been a blessing and a curse, I think, in, in a way for us as, as hockey players. But um, for Jocelyn as a hockey player, I think she's one of the most underrated, um, like has one of the most underrated skill sets as a, as a forward um, that I've seen in the, in the, in my time on the national career. And, but I think more importantly, um, her leadership, uh, when I think of everything that we went through in 2015 to 2017, I, I mean, we, we joke about it, but she was the one that ultimately made the call and really got the ball rolling when, when all of that started. And she's never afraid to have a tough conversation. She's never afraid to do the things that might stand out or might, make get me in trouble <laughs> yeah, or get in trouble yeah um but she's willing to go to bat for any teammate and willing to go to battle for any teammate and I think you saw that on the ice but ultimately off the ice as well and so um I think it goes along with um it's great all the things that we've done on the ice and what we've accomplished but more importantly the the leader and the the teammate that she that she is and that's not to say that her, we ever fell, fell short in some occasions, but we always tried to, she always learned and became better from, from everything that we went through. So extremely, extremely proud of her. It's kind of weird to talk about each other while you're sitting there, while you're sitting there but yeah. Thanks. Great, great question, Erica. Maybe we should flip the tables. Oh, I have to say something nice now. <laughs> um, I think, um, and Fish, maybe you have to fact check me on this, but um, Monique might be one of the only players in the world ever to to be named on the All Star team and at a World Championship, both as a as a D and a forward. I don't know if any player has ever done that before, um, and so I would say Mo Monique being able to be as dynamic as she has been her entire career. I think back to um our college days she played half her career as a forward half as a d and it would switch you know mid weekend series what do we what hole do we need to fill monique you're gonna you're gonna fill that hole um and so it, and always just being so willing to do that um it's not i would say that's not easy i mean some forwards can't go from right wing to left wing or center to center to wing and Monique can pretty much do it all except center if she plays forward, I don't know why center was always tough for me <laughs> um <laughs> and just being able to 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 adapt and whatever whatever the team needed she did it willingly and um and executed at an elite level um and it didn't matter at what point in the career and I think about the 2018 Olympics um Monique had been playing D for three and a half years at that point and right before the Olympics got switched to forward and had an amazing tournament and not a lot of players in any situation could do that. And I think that just speaks to um, not just her as a player, but her willingness to do whatever the team needed to win. Um, and so I think that's, that's a, that's obviously a testament to her leadership as well. And um, the type of teammate she is and was. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's impressive and fish. You should fact check me on that, but I don't know if anyone else has done that. <laughs> fact check, yeah, man. I think I think I don't think there's been anybody, but we'll make sure of that for sure, Joss. Uh, Erica, thanks for your uh, question. Uh, oh, uh, Want to go next to uh, Adam Podnix from the IHF? Adam, uh, great to uh, have you, Andrew. I said, did I call you Adam? Sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right here, folks. <laughs> Congratulations on uh, on your careers, ladies. Um, the the thing that I was most curious about, uh, Monica, uh, you brought it up quickly about um, when you guys were hosting in Plymouth and you you guys took a stand and um, you see what's been going on the last couple of years now with the PWHPA and things didn't go very well with the NWHL uh, recently. Do you guys see you becoming involved in the PWHPA more and trying to get a professional league that's really respectable let's say you know that that really can stand on its own 
Well, Jocelyn's on the board for the PWHPA, so I'm going to let her take that question. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I'm I'm very involved at this point um, on you know weekly calls and email daily emails about things that are going on, and I think that's the next big step for women's hockey is having a sustainable professional league where all the best players are playing, um, and that. You know, the Olympics and the world championships are obviously amazing for national team players, but we need more than the top um, 40 players in the U.S. being or in the in North America being supported in those tournaments. Um, we, I think, to grow the game at a at a faster pace, need something exciting during the season all year round for fans to watch and for young girls and boys to see. Um, and so. Uh, as a as a board member of the PWHPA, I think we've got some amazing things lined up. We've had some exciting partnerships just announced with the with the Leafs, with um, with the Rangers, uh, with Secret Canada, and so there's there's been some amazing partnerships developed in the last two years, um, and it's just exciting to see the excitement around women's hockey and. And we're, we're an association we're, we're ran by the players for the players. And so I think the momentum is, is on our side, obviously with the pandemic, things have had to change and we've had to adjust and adapt, but it's exciting to see um, what's coming along the, along the road. And we think that we're going to be able to accomplish something great in the coming years. All right, thanks, Andrew, for the question. And uh, next, we will go over to uh, Carol Schramm from Forbes, New York Times, other parts. Carol, great to have you. <laughs> thanks, Dave, and uh, congratulations, Jocelyn and Monique. Um, I wanted to go back to Pyeongchang. Um, Jocelyn, your Oops, I Did It Again goal lives on in infamy. The GIF is out there on Twitter. People can watch it whenever they want. So Monique, I wanted to ask you about the goal that you scored to tie that game, which has maybe been a little bit overshadowed. Can you uh, walk us through the memory of what that what that moment was like for you, what, what it felt like leading up to the goal and then uh, the play itself? Well, I think going into the um, third period, so we're down two to one, um, Marie Philip Poulin had scored the second goal to go up and as anybody who's watched women's hockey knows that when she scores in the gold medal game, it's usually an important goal. Um, but anyways, we in the locker room, the, the energy and the feeling and the confidence in the locker room was so much different than in 2014. Um, I think it, we had such a great mixture of leadership and veterans and then that, and then younger players. And when I think of our younger, our younger group of players in 2018, that had grown up going to U18 World Championships, and then a number of them had been a part of three World Championships going into into the Olympics. All they have done is is won World Championships. They've just been successful and have won at every level. And so, to to have that type of confidence within your your younger players, and then us older players knowing, I think, really understanding the pressure, having been through some of us two Olympic gold medal losses. I think it was just that mixture. I think add it equal confidence for whatever reason and just this feeling that we were going to figure out a way to, to tie that game up and win the game and so when we were on the ice in that specific play well throughout that period we had been we had had opportunities we thought that we were out playing Canada had had out chance them it was it was still back and forth but in that particular play uh, we actually gave up a two on one and I was I think behind the goal line when that play had developed and so they came down the ice, uh, the Canadian player shot the puck blocker side, and I believe it hit uh, Maddie Rooney's, uh, the knob of her stick, I think. And it came around the corner pretty quick. And so Canada had went for a change. So we caught them on a bad line change and Kelly panic ended up with the puck on her stick and made an unbelievable pass that I think went through the um, Canadian defenders, like skate and stick went in between something and I caught it on my backhand and was quite shocked that I had so much time and space on, on a breakaway like that in the third period. And as I went down the breakaway, I could think of Peter Elander, our, our college coach telling me so many times, if you're on a breakaway in a game, you should always shoot in his Swedish accent. And so I remember thinking, okay, like, hey, I got to shoot this puck. I got to shoot it. And so um, I was fortunate. I, I usually like to shoot like below, um, this bottom half of the net when I'm shooting on breakaways typically. 
Um, so I was lucky that that way it went right under Zabados's glove, who's known for her um, stellar glove saves. So I'm glad it just went in. And to be able to have a moment like that in a gold medal game, it's it's pretty special. And I'm okay that Jocelyn's shootout goal totally overshadows it. It's totally fine with me. <laughs> Oh, great question, Carol. Oh, I just got the butterflies thinking back to that time and uh, great description there, Mo, too. Uh, gosh, fun to see Joanne Gerstner here on with us. Joanne, uh, I think your line should be open. Welcome and please go ahead. Thank you so much, Fish. It was good as always to hear from you. Ladies, congratulations on an amazing career. And I was a little shocked to hear that you actually thought you'd be able to slip out this morning with just a super chill retirement, drop the mic and walk away. Uh, could you take me through your morning and anyone surprising text you? What's it been like? I mean, are your phones blown up? You know, talk, talk us through the reception that's going on about this news. Yeah, well, it's been kind of busy. My husband had to hit the road early and then it's so cold here. Um, my car didn't start. So we, yeah, it's it was, like minus 30 right yeah, now. Um, so that was a great start to the day. Um, but <laughs> but uh, we kind of blocked off a little time in the morning to have to ourselves. So we both went into the gym and worked out uh, before the craziness started. And once we got through our workout and looked at our phones, we kind of messages are just kind of going off, um, consistently throughout the day. But, um, I think the, the most meaningful messages we've been getting are just from teammates, um, that we've played with for, for a year or for 10 years or 15 in some cases. And so, um, those, those have been the most meaningful. Um, but yeah, Monique and I kind of like to fly under the radar, I guess. And so we thought, you know, it'd you know, we get some messages here and there, um, but it's kind of been pretty constant throughout the morning. Yeah, we, so were, far. we were actually at the gym and we were talking, it was just us two and then another um, friend of ours that was in there at the time before the kind of the rush in the morning. And we had been, we had talked to her a few times. She was, you guys is, we had told her like a week or so ago that we were planning on retiring. And she, she was like, when's you, that's coming up soon. Right. And I actually, I looked at the clock and I go, actually, it's like being announced right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of how we were going about our morning, but it was nice to kind of take our, take some time for ourselves and then trying to now just try to like soak everything in. And it's probably going to take us a day or two to get back to everybody that sent us um, some nice messages via social or text or whatever it may be, but it's been uh, pretty, pretty cool and special to see the, the outpouring of support. Uh, thus far today. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, what did you guys have for breakfast? Um, I think I had Nelson's leftover oatmeal because <laughs> he didn't eat it all and a banana. <laughs> I had a pancake. So my, my diet's quite different that I'm pregnant. So I just eat whatever sounds good at the time. <laughs> so nice. I'm lucky that it wasn't like M&Ms and like a pizza like banana bread or something because that could be very well at some morning so maybe later in the day yeah <laughs> um uh, next we go to uh, nhl.com adam kimmelman and uh, ak i think your line should be open hi to both of you congratulations on the great careers um you know you still you mentioned earlier that that women are playing later playing longer into their careers I'm curious, did anyone, family, teammates, friends, try talking you out of this, out of this decision, try to convince you to keep playing? Um, not, not really. Not really. Um, one of our brothers, uh, not all of them, just one of them, uh, Pierre Paul, was like, oh, come on, you think, like, think you can hang on for another one? Um, but I think the way, the way we train and the way we've um, done our training and done what we can to prepare. Uh, it's not, it's not glamorous. And I think a lot of, a lot of our close friends and teammates know that. Um, and I think obviously we didn't come to the decision lightly. So I don't know if anyone could change our minds. Um, maybe if all of our teammates showed up at our door, that would be the only <laughs> thing that would change our mind. But, uh, no, I, I think people kind of know where, where we're at in our lives and respect that and especially our family. And so it's been, um, nothing but support from everyone. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Adam. I, uh, it wouldn't be a press conference if we didn't go up to Grand Forks and hear <laughs> Brett Toshman. I mean, he, did, he honestly did not have his hand up 
But I mean, we, I mean, Slosh, I know you must have a question. I know you've talked to, they're right there and you've talked to the lambs probably 18 times in the last month, but. Yeah, Fish, I think I looked at uh, my archives this morning and I think I've written 220 stories on the twins in 15 years. So they may be retiring just to get rid of me and not have to talk to me all the time anymore. You're probably happy about it. In news is yeah, uh, I've yeah, I, I'm not sure if uh, there's a whole lot more to ask, um, but uh, you, you know, someone already asked to just the people you've heard from, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard from uh, some people in town this morning too. Um, just what what has the reaction been like uh, from from Grand Forks? Uh, well, we've flown under the radar today, so we left like we knew that there was going to be some people coming into the gym that we're probably going to like talk our ears off for a little bit. So we kind of bolted before uh, the rush came in. Um, but we've, I mean, I would expect that when we get off this call, we're going to have um, some replying and responding to do on our phones, but uh, our close friends and family have known for a little while, a couple of weeks now that we, that we're going to retire. And so it's just been the, the support and the understanding of why we're, moving on to the next stage in our lives. Obviously I'm having another baby, so that makes it um, pretty obvious, but um, just to know that we've always had the support of the Grand Forks community um, and family and friends. And to, to know that, I mean, I think of Jocelyn helps out with the U15 girls team right now. And one of the girls on the team, her dad actually coached us when we were in Bantams. And we always say he was one of our favorite coaches growing up. And so, to see different moments like that come full circle in the last um, year or so, you think of people like that have that have had an impact on your life, and now you're hopefully having an impact on um, other lives um, in a similar fashion. And so, to to have that support from people around the community, and especially again family and friends, it's been it's been amazing. Awesome. I think Mr. Kimmelman has a follow up. I don't know. I, I, I... AK, do you have a follow up or do your hand still up there? Uh, I think you I must be okay. I, I, I think we, if there's any further questions, please raise your hand. I put everybody's hands down. I think we got to everybody. And I know we have our friends from uh, NBC and the New York Hockey Journal and US College Hockey Online and others at uh, USA Hockey Magazine that have had their questions answered, but appreciate you guys being here uh, as well today. Uh, where are Nelson and Mickey at, by the way? <laughs> they're at daycare. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're no army, so we can't see them today. Daycare. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, gosh, uh, what, what a fun day. Uh, bittersweet, as has been said, but uh, to Monique and Jocelyn, uh, congratulations just on a spectacular career. Thanks to the uh, news media for joining us and all your great coverage of the Twins and our sport.